All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, so I couldn't be here this morning, first hour, but here's our um, our 1.3 section and say it with symbols. Um, we're going to deal with different variable expressions, um, just at a little bit of a higher level than what we did in Investigation 1, 1, and 1, 2. So in, uh, in part, the first part, where you see the A, B, C, and the D, we're dealing with the uh, area of a circle. And we have various shaded regions. So, and for probably most of you who don't remember, um, our area of a circle is area equals pi r squared. Okay? And again, you notice here, this is the whole circle. So, if we take that and say, okay, in B, what's the difference from B to uh, part A? All right, it's half a circle. So, that half a circle, all right, if we were to change the first equation to the second equation, we could write it one of three ways. You could write it area equals pi r squared over 2. We could write it as it's half of pi r squared, right? And again, this one, they're all the same equation. This is just different ways to write the top one and the bottom one. Or we could also write it in decimal form of area equals 0 0.5 pi r squared. So in a decimal form. All right. Now, if you look at part C, part C we go down to what? So from A we had a full, B we had a half, and in C, we have a what? Right, we have a quarter. So again, we can take these three expressions that we wrote in B and then change them to our, our quarter, which is pi r squared over 4, 1 fourth of pi r squared. And of course, the decimal value is what? Right, 0 0.25. All these expressions mean the same thing. So we could find a quarter of that area of that circle. Now in D, in D, you can see on your paper it looks just really dark because it's black and white. But you can see on the board here we have a purple region that's shaded. And how much of the circle is shaded now? Right, that's three-fourths. So let's see if we took the first ones and we kind of critiqued it to the three-fourths, we want to write this. Because in B and C, you notice how we wrote no number on the top, we just put it over 2 and over 4, but really there's a 1 on top. So over here, we're going to write this as area equals 3 pi r squared over 4, because it's three-fourths of a circle that we're looking to find the area of, the shaded region. Okay. So again, four different ways to find the area of a circle with different shaded regions. One-fourth, a half, three-fourths, and of course, the whole. So what does the variable r represent in this equation? When you see these little r's here, 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 very tiny, but you can see it there and here. r represents the what? Right, the radius. And the radius is basically half the length across the circle, or from the center to the edge. All right, is there more than one way to write the expression, for example, D? Well, yeah, if we use our examples from B and C, we could also change it to um, area equals 3 fourths pi r squared, and of course the decimal, which is 0 0.75 pi r squared. Again, they all mean the same thing. So, again, lots of different ways to write those variable expressions. Um, and there's multiple ways to write them, as we've discovered um, throughout this book. Okay. So now we're going to get into um, something from the book. So if you get out your book and go to page 19, please. 
and wants to label this part. So if you go to 19 in your book, which is an ACE question, number 24, I'll slide this down here. All right, so our pool's inside here. So here's our center point. Our radius is four feet. And then the border area here, our border area is one foot. Okay. So, using what we've um, accumulated from the top with those different forms of circles, they want us to find the area of the circular pool. So, if we have the area of the pool, all right, and again, that's a full circle, right? So, we're up top. What equation can we use up top to find the area of a full circle? Right, part A. Because that was area equals pi times the radius squared. Okay. So, if we plug in for R, 4, okay, we know that 4 squared is what? 4 squared is 16, right? So we could leave this as 16 pi. And then, of course, when we're talking about area, and we're talking in feet, so this could be feet squared. So you could leave it as just that. Or if you wanted to figure out the exact length with included pi, if you take 16, and then you hit the second function symbol, and then you hit that little up arrow above the divide sign for pi, so your calculator reads 16 pi, and you hit enter. You see you get the decimal uh, 50 uh, point, we'll say, say 0.27 feet squared. So the area of the circular pool is this. And these numbers are exactly the same. One, we left in basically radian form, 16 pi. We didn't calculate it out. And this is in full simplified form at 50.27. Both those numbers mean the same thing. Okay? So now, if I wanted the area of the border, just the area of the border, okay? Because remember, our diameter of the circle is what? From edge to edge. Right, if I go from if I go from here all the way across to here, we got one foot on each side basically, right? It's one foot around. So really it's six feet across. So but now I just want the border. So if I take out that pool, I got an open little circle, right? I got an open little circle. So if I'm using the the radius formula, okay. So basically, if, you, if you're having a hard time seeing it, right, we basically just have a ring. If I remove the pool, the pool's gone. So I just have the ring. So it looks like i got a big letter O. Okay. So if this distance across, okay, is one foot, that's the diameter, okay, from edge to edge, okay. Because remember, there's nothing in here. It's empty. Okay? The radius is always half of that, right? So if we were looking for the radius of that little ring, the radius is half a foot. But the diameter is one foot, because the radius is always half. So if we try to put that in the area uh, for the border, so that's going to be area equals, again, a pi r squared. But again, our radius is what? Our radius is half now of the ring. Now we're just finding the border. So when I take the square of a half, right, one half times one half, or, or it's 0 0.5, right? And take 0 0.5 and square it, what do you get? Yeah, you get 0.25 or a quarter, right? Because one half squared is basically one half times one half, 
which equals one fourth. So you could have one fourth pi as your answer, and that's in feet squared. Or if you actually want to find out what the actual answer is, take 0 0.25 and then hit the pi button, second function, arrow, and you get 0 0.79 square feet. So that's the area of the border. Okay. So if we were then to just say, well, what's the total area then of the pool? including the border, you just take these two guys here and add them together. Okay, so that's how we can use that area of the circle to to help us find, uh, or I'm sorry, the formula basically to find the, <clears throat> to find the uh, area, total area. And that includes the border. So border, I'm sorry, area, uh, pool, border, and if you added them all up, if I take 50.27 and then add 0.79 to it, it's 51.06 if you want the whole thing. That's with the border. All right, so again, I know you've been off for a few weeks, so... Hopefully this is kind of getting the brain going a little bit here. All right, let's turn the page because now the, uh, the warm-up is over and the fun begins. So now we get into this pool problem here. All right, it says, in this problem, you will interpret symbolic statements and use them to make predictions. So we've done, we found various parts here of the um, areas of circles. Got to try to remember areas of rectangles and squares as well. It says a community center is building a pool, part indoor, part outdoor. Have you ever swim in a pool that was indoor and outdoor? Right, we could swim through like a, a little retaining wall or a barrier, you know, and go outside. So the diagram of the indoor pool is, is shown here. So there you see the indoor pool, which is basically, if you look at it, okay, it's basically kind of a rectangle here, right? You see it? Here's your rectangle. Right, and then you got half a square. Kind of looks like a basketball key. So here's your area, here's your rectangle, right? And there's your half a square. So again, don't forget, what's the area of a rectangle? Area of a rectangle is area equals length times the width, right? And if we needed to figure out area of a square, just to refresh the memory. Uh, the area of a square is you got this, it's the same formula, right? But a square has equal sides, right? So it could also be, remember we talked about sides squared. So it says the indoor shape is made from half a circle with the radius X. Okay, so there you see it right here. Radius is X. So from there to there, it's X, X distance. We don't know it. And the rectangle has a length of 4X. So this side length here is 4x. So here's what we need to do. Okay, and obviously we haven't figured out the outdoor part of the pool yet. But you can see where the building wall is. Well, they give us this formula here. They give us this formula for the pool. Area equals x squared plus pi x squared over 2 plus 8x squared plus pi x squared over 4. So here's your first little mission. It says, which part of the expression of the area of the pool represents the indoor part? So what I want you guys to try to do is see from the information you're given here in the picture what parts of this equation. There's four parts here, right? One, two, three, four. Which ones do you think represent the inside of the pool. Okay. Then, obviously, what's left over will answer question two, which will be the outside part of the pool. And we'll talk about that in just a second. 
So we're going to pause this video here in just a second. Again, your, your object is to, take, is to try to figure out with the picture you're given here. And if I erase this, okay, there's the information you're given, right? You have a rectangle and a half a square, a half a circle, okay? Where are those represented in the formula? All right, so pause this video, and we'll come back and see how you did. We're going to give you, say, about 10 minutes. We'll see if you guys can figure it out. All right, go. Okay, while we're zooming the video, let's see how you did here. We're going to bring this down. Well, again, the indoor part of the pool, okay? So if I'm looking at just the rectangle, okay, I'm try to do this in different colors here. So here is my rectangle, okay? And I know that my distance is, is of an area of a rectangle is length times the width, right? Well, I have my length, but my width, I only have half of it, right? So if, if this half here is x, that means this half is x. So really here, this distance here is 2x, right? If I count the whole length, if I add both side lengths together, because half of it is x, so the full length has to be 2x. So if I scroll down here to some of my work, so if I know the rectangle here, If my length is 4x, if my length is 4x, if my width is 2x, when I multiply those together, well, I know that 4 times 2 is 8, and then x times x is x squared. So 8x squared, this is the rectangle. So now, all I got to do is figure out what my half a circle was, right? Well, if you look on the front, what was the formula for your half a circle? That was pi r squared, but radius is x, right? So pi x squared over 2 is your half a circle, which is where? Right here. So there's your half circle. So there are your two pieces of the indoor pool, the area. Okay, when they add them together. Okay, why is the whole thing combined? Well, because you got fractions and whole numbers and uncommon denominators, and it's kind of crazy, right? So you can't really combine it. So the remaining pieces I have, if you look in the formula here, I'll do this in red, are x squared and pi x squared over 4. Well, we kind of know what pi x squared over 4 is, right? Look in the front of your sheet. What was that formula? <coughs> yeah, that was a quarter of a circle, right? And then what's left here is basically x squared. Well, to get x squared, that's x times an x, right? So what shape, what shape could be when you have the two sides are the same length? When you multiply it together, you get the area. It's a square. So the two missing shapes, and this is the outdoor part of the pool. This is your square. And this is your quarter circle. So a number part B here, it says if you make a sketch of the outdoor part, well, let's move it down here. Well, again, our square is X, right? So we could do this one of two ways. My square has to be the same length as this radius here, right? If our side length is X. So I can make my square here. And then I could connect my quarter circle to it here. That could be a possibility. Um, if I wanted to be different, I could connect my quarter circle to the outside of the square, like this. That looks kind of funky. Look at the claw or something. All right. Or I could obviously even flip it upside down. I could put my square here, because again, the length is x. 
which also happens to be the length of the diameter, so or the radius. So I can only go halfway, so I can flip it upside down that way too. All those answers are completely acceptable. Okay, so that's kind of what my pool looks like. Here's the uh, here's the indoor part, all in here, and then the outdoor part is connected. And obviously, there wouldn't be a line here if that was the outdoor pool. I mean, obviously, this line would be gone, right? So you'd kind of have something like this. Right, there wouldn't, there, you know, you kind of get the idea that the line is there, but the, the kind of shape of the outdoor part. So obviously, the outdoor part is significantly smaller um, than the indoor part. All right. So again, all we've done in that lesson is just try to identify parts of a variable expression. All right. And obviously, we're using some geometry here, which is sometimes can be a tricky uh, component, but that's all we did was identify some parts of of the equation. All right, moving on to that last page. It says here, Stella and Jerry each wrote the expression for the area of the outdoor part of the pool to help them make a sketch. Okay, so obviously this is a different equation, right? So here's Stella's equation, and here's Jerry's equation. All right. So here's what I want you guys to do. Just like we did in the first one, I want you to we'll pause this video here in just a second. I want your each team to see if we can figure out what part of the equation is what. And you can use any information that we've done on the previous two pages, okay, um, to see if that can help you identify what parts or what shapes um, these parts of the equations um, occupy, okay. And we'll come up with that, and then, and then we will come back together and see how you did, and what kind of shapes that you found, and then we'll finish up the rest of this with, uh, in, in shortly after. So right now, as a group, part C, I want you to find, I want you to dissect Stella's equation. It's got three parts, really two. These are the same. So tell me what those two things are, and then dissect Jerry's, which has three parts here here and here. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, well now that you've had time to do that, well from the previous equation, right, we learned that x squared was what? x squared was a square, right? And basically the pi x squared over 8 is what? Well, if pi x squared over 2 was a half, and pi x squared over 4 was a quarter, and 3, x, 3 pi x squared over 4 was 3 fourths of a circle, the pi x squared over 8 is 1 eighth of a circle. But now, if you think about 1 eighth of a circle, well, there's two of them, right? So if I add 1 eighth plus 1 eighth together, I get 2 eighths, which is also a fourth. So you could have also said that this piece here, together, is a quarter of a circle. Okay. So if we were to draw that, if we were to draw that square off the end here, and here's the quarter part, we just break that in half. So that's kind of what that would look like. Stella sketch. All right. Now if we go down to Jerry... Well, Jerry's got a half x and a 2x, okay? Well, we definitely know this one, right? This guy right here is what? Pi x squared over 4 is a quarter circle, right? So basically what you have with a half x and 2x is you basically have two sides of something. You have a length and a width side probably there. Right? So that half x times 2x, since the sides aren't the same length, that's a rectangle. Anyone get a rectangle? You did a good job. It's kind of tough to see. So if I were to draw that, well, the rectangle obviously had to come first, right? So obviously a half x and 2x is double the length of half, right? Actually, it's quadruple the length. So there's your, and if I were to label these, right, here's my 2x side, 
Here's my half X side. And then off the back of that is my quarter circle. And I can have it going here or there. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So again, Jerry's shape to Stella's shape, obviously with a change of equations, it's a little different. Now they want us to say, show that these two expressions are equal. And remember, we did this a lot in investigation 1, 1, and 1, 2, um, which seems like forever ago. But if I, if I do Stella's equation here, all right, x squared plus pi x squared over 8. And again, don't forget, there's really a 1 out in front of here, right? 1 eighth. So we're going to work on Stella's first. So I can combine these two guys because they are like terms. Right? I can add those together to get 2 pi x squared over 8. Because, again, that's like up here when I added 1 eighth and 1 eighth together. Okay? It's 2 eighths. Okay? And, again, the, the pi and the x squared stayed the same because it's like adding 2x plus 2x is 4x. Kind of the same idea. Right? Well, 2 eighths can reduce to... One fourth. So again, this becomes a one. That could become a four to give you um, pi x squared over four. So that's Stella's expression reduced. Well, if I go to Jerry, if I go to Jerry, and Jerry's equation was one half x times two x plus pi x squared over 4. Well, if I multiply 1 half times 2, I get 1, right? And x times x is x squared. And when I rewrite this, look what happens. They are the same expression, just using different shapes. All right, so just using our simplification skills to uh, show these two expressions are equal, breaking it down. So the last part is here, it says write an equivalent expression to the expression from part A for the total pool, <clears throat> for the total pool. So basically, if you look at this, is there anything we could combine to simplify this expression? So again, I want you guys to pause this video and see what you could possibly come up with. But I'm going to give you a hint. We have some we have some like terms here, right? We have an x squared and an x squared, and this is a half and a quarter. So think about if I had one half and I tried to add a quarter to it, how could I do that? And not only that, how could I add an x squared plus an 8x squared together? Those are the two things I want you to think about. And if it helps, use the commutative property and reorder this. So if I write it like this, How can that help me simplify something to come up with an equivalent expression? So again, we're going to pause this video and see what you come up with. Okay. Well, I know when I take like an, if I took 8, if I took x plus 8x, that would give me 9x, right? So the only difference is if I take, if I have an x squared, all it is is if I combine these two, I can combine these two guys to... 9x squared. Okay, the, the variables don't change, nor do the exponents. We add the numbers out in front. Okay, so if I write this over here. Now, if I took a half and tried to add to a fourth, what would I have to do to be able to add fractions with uncommon denominators? I would have to come up with a common denominator, right? So I could write 1 half 
as change it to two fourths, right? And then I could add it. So I could change this fraction here to two pi x squared over four. So now when I add it to pi x squared over four, this would become what? This will combine to three pi x squared over four because two fourths plus one fourth is three fourths. And look what I've changed this equation into. This equation and this equation are the same thing. So basically you have a you have a rectangle, x squared and eight x squared, right? The rectangle and the square. And basically three fourths of a circle when it all comes down to it. So now we're going to try to come. Now we're going to try to. Would you would you say that this expression here that we circled down here is linear or nonlinear? Again, right? We know linear to be what? Y equals m x plus b. So would you say that that expression is linear? Nope. You are right. It is nonlinear. And why is it nonlinear? It's nonlinear because of the x squared. Okay, the x squared is actually what we call a quadratic function. That is something you'll learn next year. But a quadratic function is something that we call a parabola. It's in the shape of a u. Either like this, Oop, not, no, not a, there's no curve here. Let me, let me extend my page here. So it's either like this or the graph can look like that. So this is a nonlinear function. Okay. And then there's no way it could be, right? You're talking about squares and rectangles. It's not a straight line. It's not even close to a straight line. All right. All right, so I hope this video helped. And uh, as we almost finish off investigation one, say it was simple.